So in this uh, second lecture on social networks, uh, I will be talking about uh, how to measure social networks. Okay, so when we think about networks, we need to think about their composition because otherwise we can't really measure them. So what do networks consist of? Uh, nodes. Uh, so nodes are, I always like to think of them as circles, those circles representing the uh, things that are connected. So those things can be people, as I said in my first uh, lecture, they can be people, they can be organizations, they can even be events, um, and uh, they have attributes or characteristics, which we are very interested in. For example, we want to know if the people that are most closely connected in a large network are of the same age, or they are of the same socioeconomic level, uh, or their uh, gender similar, and so on. So uh, we also want to know about uh, how they're connected. Uh, so we'll be talking about the different ways that we can think of connections. And then uh, we want to uh, think about the characteristics of those relationships, which have to do with uh, strength, how strong they are, uh, and directionality, which way do they go? Do they go from, from one person to another only, or do they go both ways? Uh, so here are some examples of uh, the way we think about uh, individuals. So the attributes of individuals as nodes in a network are could be uh, ethnicity, as I said, gender, age, uh, their, where they live, their HIV status, uh, their education, their global health assessment, uh, their sociability, their weight, uh, their risk behaviors, and so on. So they, attributes can be just about anything you're interested in as long as you can attribute them to every node in your network. Organizations may, uh, the attributes of organizations might include um, the size of the personnel, how big they are, how vertically organized they are, uh, the location, uh, aspects of the structure that's important, uh, measures of organizational climate, positive, negative, and all the sort of details of organizational climate assessment, or gross uh, profit, um, where, they, where they put their... Um, where they put their profit, whether it's in country or offshore, and so on. So uh, about the ties, the ties between nodes, uh, how are nodes connected? Well, they can be connected uh, by, through some kind of uh, evaluative means. So the relationship is positive, uh, the relationship is beneficial, the relationship produces a resource, something like that. Uh, they can be connected through resource transfer. Do people exchange money? Do they exchange information? Do they support different forms of social support? Um, let's say health information, um, car, transportation, that sort of thing. Uh, and that transfer can go one way or both ways. Uh, whether there is kinship or some kind of affiliation, for example, prior knowing someone prior to the assessment, uh, whether they're related uh, by marriage, uh, whether they're, they're related through birth, that kind of thing. Um, nodal interactions um, then can be uh, one way or two way. Um, as I think I've already mentioned this, but uh, they can include whether people talk together, they share resources together, and so on. And again, that can go both ways or not. Or whether the relationships are vertical, um, if someone works or uh, is somehow ranked under the other person and connected to that other person. So if we're looking at hierarchy in an organization, we definitely want to know that. Or if we're looking at drug dealing networks uh, in a street study, we'd want to know who reports to who in that kind of network if it's a selling network. So uh, the measures of the relationship, as I said, were, are directional um, and or non-directional. They may be neutral. Uh, and they may be intensity non-valued, that is, there's no intensity in the relationship, or they may be valued by their strength, uh, by their intensity, that is, let's say, how uh, important the relationship is, uh, by the frequency with which it happens, and by how much, various measures of how much. So um, we measure network context composition uh, that captures the characteristics of a population of people within a given network. So we can talk about heterogeneity, for example, when we're looking at what, what results are we interested in. We want to know um, 
whether the people who share an attribute, for example, class, uh, are closely connected or they're dispersed throughout the network. Um, is it a class dispersed network? Um, and similarly, if it's uh, some kind of risk behavior, are the people who conduct it close together or are they arrayed throughout the network, which means probably that they're going to communicate that risk behavior to other people uh, who are not in their immediate network. Um, so means, um, so we can look at means. If we look at um, GPA is a good example or let's say income mean is a good example. So <clears throat> if we want to ask the question of how likely is it that most of a person's friends in a network will go to college, we could look at those means. Uh, <clears throat> so the means may range or the means may cluster. Uh, and again, dispersion um, about time. What's the age range of people ego spends time with? It, again, is it dispersed? Okay, so we can measure these features uh, in a simple ego-centered uh, network study, but we can also measure them uh, when we're interested in components or cliques or subgroups within a network to see if we can find those subgroups that are different from one another and possibly connected or not very much connected. So how do we get network data? Um, there are a number of ways that we can collect it. So first of all, through self-report, that is the main way that people collect network data. You ask the person who the person is connected to. And there are many ways of asking that. The most important thing in asking the individual is to get the question right. So if you don't get the question right, you don't understand the answer. So the question may be, um, please tell me the important, the people who are the most important people in your uh, personal network. Or please tell me about the people who are the uh, who you trust the most in your personal network, uh, something like that. But you have to understand what the question is and why you're asking it, and it has to be clear to everybody you ask it to, or you won't get the answers. That you'll get inconsistency in answers. You can also collect network data through observations. For example, in one of our studies, the researchers and uh, drug users. Uh, themselves went out together to places where people were using drugs to observe uh, not only dyads but relationships among people in those settings and what they were actually doing. That's a very important way of identifying hidden uh, data and also knowing what to ask later on in a survey. Uh, you can uh, obtain network data by looking at archives. Some people do that. They may go back even you know two or three or six hundred years in history to review the documents on individuals or institutions and how they interact with each other. You can record attendance at events uh, and see how they match if you have names or other ways of identifying egos. Uh, and you can also uh, collect people's diaries or um, uh, other, the other kinds of matri matrices that I showed you earlier. So uh, what are the measures that we're interested in in a macro uh, network? Uh, we're also interested, again, in ego-centered networks, but because we want to know how people see themselves relating to others and how they see others relating to them. But that is perceptual data. So uh, we're uh, interested in the way... Um, uh, the person uh, describes their relationship with the alter or the other person, and we are also interested in the way the other person sees ego. So we are less interested in how ego perceives the alter's relationship with ego. Uh, so uh, strength uh, uh, is uh, basically a question of how strong is this relationship. Uh, between the two units. And for people, you can ask that question for institutions. You have to find more indirect measures. Usually we use a Likert scale. Uh, person centrality is uh, the degree which is produced in the UCNet software, the degree to which people are named by others in the network. Um, so someone may be named by six or seven other people in the network and somebody else might be named by only two or three. So the first person is more central, uh, has a considerably higher degree of person centrality than the second. Uh, mean centrality is the mean of the centrality. Every person has a centrality score. So the mean is the mean of all of the centrality scores of all the members in the network. And since different networks differ in their structure, you would see 
different means. For example, we work in senior housing and we have network data that I'll show you in another lecture about the relationships among people who live in those senior buildings and uh, different people, different buildings uh, will have different means in terms of the degree to which people are central or not central. Uh, multiplicity uh, considers the number of different relationships between individuals in the network, and density is a measure of the degree to which people are connected to all other individuals in the network, which is actual over all the possible connections. Okay, so we're going to skip over this a little bit just to show you that uh, I'm going to show you some network pictures based on network data collected in Ad Health, uh, looking at school network data. So here you see school type, grade range, the region, demographic characteristics, and behavioral characteristics in this data set. Uh, so this is just one. There are many uh, uh, other such pictures uh, of the networks that connect schools uh, in this particular countrywide school district. It's one school district. So here you can see the dis distribution by ethnicity, and you can see a big clustering of white students uh, who are all networked with each other on the left, and a, a scattering of mixed and other students throughout, and again, a pretty tightly networked group of black students. Uh, and very little, it's, this is a segregated environment, and I would be asking you if I could see you what you see in this picture, but I'll tell you, it's obviously a highly segregated environment, so we can ask why that is. Now, we're interested within this kind of, this is a, a macro environment that includes all the schools, and it may even include middle and high schools, uh, which might, might be the explanation for why there are um, white students on the left-hand side and students of color and, uh, on the right-hand side, because we, uh, I'll let you imagine why that might be yourselves. Uh, so we're interested in cohesion here. How cohesive is this, uh, this network? It looks pretty cohesive. Uh, is there groupness? Um, is there a cohesive subgroup? Well, it's pretty difficult to tell whether in this picture whether there are cohesive subgroups, but you can see four of them where there are larger clusters of people connected together and they're linked by smaller numbers or in one case over there on the right-hand side by almost no members. Uh, and then inclusion. Some people are not in groups while other people bridge groups. Uh, so you can go back and look at that slide and see if you can find bridge people and people who are excluded. So uh, this is uh, how, again, an adjacency matrix where uh, showing you how we enter the data for ego and alters. And there is a graph that shows the relationships on the, on the right, on the left-hand side, showing how people are related to each other. And you can uh, derive from this scores that show you density, multiplicity, intensity, and so on. So here is, uh, if we're asking research questions, here is a linear approach to network data where network characteristics are uh, mediators and we're looking for the causes of particular types of networks and the effects of those networks on people's behavior. And here we're looking uh, at a more structural uh, question, not a linear question, which is more like if we have a system and we have nodes within a system and the people are connected in different ways through those, uh, the nodes are connected, usually people, <clears throat> in <clears throat> different ways, how can we show how information or social influence flows through this network? So, for example, if it's a, a dense network, the information may flow very quickly because all people are connected to um, each other to, with a high degree of closeness. But if it's a very loosely connected network, it might be one or two people who diffuse the information and it takes longer for that information to reach, especially the corners of that, the distant corners of that network. By distance, I don't mean ge geographic distance, I mean social distance. So network characteristics then can be dependent variables. Here are some questions you might ask. For example, why are some schools segregated and others are not? Uh, what accounts for homophily or similarity in friendship choices? And what accounts for HIV in some networks and not others? Uh, if uh, network characteristics are predictors, we can say <clears throat> questions, for example, 
um, is Ego's probability of smoking related to the smoking of those he or she hangs out with? Um, or do peer networks, this is more like, do networks influence behavior? So if networks, again, are closely connected, mul multiplex, that might mean that transition to first intercourse, if sex is part of that system, transition to first intercourse might occur either early or at the same time throughout that closely knit network. Uh, whereas in a loose network, people may have more opportunities to make more independent decisions or be influenced by other sources, so they may uh, make their own uh, different decisions, variable decisions about first intercourse, and so on. So I'm sure you can um, invent a number of questions for yourself. So thank you, and uh, we'll go on to the third lecture of giving you some examples of how we apply these concepts uh, in specific projects.